In late May, the circus that is Russian-US relations added a few more clowns to its act, pushing the show into new realms of absurdity. It all started when the US decided to give Ukraine a nod and a wink, allowing them to use American arms to target Russian soil. As if that wasn't enough of a comedy of errors, Poland chimed in, claiming the US would obliterate all Russian forces in the special operations zone if Moscow dared to whip out the nukes. And to top it off, President Putin hinted that he expects NATO to escalate the conflict by summer. Just when the audience thought the show couldn't get any more ridiculous, Ukraine took the stage with its own antics. Welcome to TFI Global, the antidote to mass delusion. In a move that only a slapstick script writer could dream up, Ukraine managed to hit at least one of Russia's early nuclear warning systems. Not content with that, they boasted about targeting another, deeper in Russian territory, although this second hit remains unconfirmed. These systems, designed to detect incoming intercontinental ballistic missiles from a potential US first strike, are crucial for Russia to prepare for a retaliatory strike. They have absolutely nothing to do with the Ukrainian conflict and everything to do with global strategic stability. While both systems reportedly still work, this incident is a first in the history of nuclear posturing. Never before has any country been foolish enough to target another's nuclear warning systems, potentially blinding them to a first strike and giving the attacker a huge advantage. With Russian-US relations already at their lowest since the Cuban Missile Crisis, the timing of this blunder couldn't be worse. The million dollar question now is, is Ukraine going rogue to provoke a crisis, hoping Russia will pull back from some of the territory's Kiev claims? Or did they get a thumbs up from Uncle Sam? The Washington Post reported that US officials are worried about what Ukraine did suggesting that maybe Ukraine is acting out on its own. But then again, that could be just some top-notch disinformation for plausible deniability. Remember when Ukraine gave a middle finger to the US by targeting Russian oil refineries despite explicit public demands not to? The Biden administration didn't want oil prices to spike ahead of the November elections. Yet Zelensky went ahead and ordered those hits anyway. This happened right when Congress was deadlocked over more Ukraine aid, a deadlock that conveniently broke shortly after the strikes. So Ukraine playing the rogue card isn't exactly a new trick in their deck. The Financial Times even reported that some Ukrainian officials say their relationship with the US is at rock bottom, thanks to restrictions on targeting Russian refineries and Zelensky's paranoia about US intentions. Zelensky was so offended by Biden snubbing the upcoming Swiss peace talks in favor of a fundraiser that he sent a memo to his officials, instructing them to criticize the US leader. Given this context, it seems wise for Russia to assume that the US at least tacitly approved Ukraine's strikes on its early warning system. If NATO or a quote-unquote coalition of the willing within NATO decides to intervene in Ukraine, it could provoke Russia to use tactical nukes in self-defense, especially if the intervention crosses the Dnieper River and threatens Russian-held territories. Should this scenario unfold, the US might either launch a conventional strike against all Russian forces in the special operations zone as Poland suggested, or escalate directly to a first nuclear strike, facilitated by Ukraine's continued attacks on Russian early warning systems. Such attacks could precede a US first nuclear strike if American decision makers believe an exchange is inevitable. It's plausible that Ukraine's actions were a security probe on Russia's early warning systems, orchestrated by their American patrons, in preparation for the worst case scenario. This aligns with Dmitry Suslov's advice for Russia to conduct a demonstrative nuclear test, as he suggested in a policy proposal published by Russia Times. This proposal aims to signal to the US the seriousness of the situation without sparking World War III. So the big question remains, did Ukraine go rogue or was this all part of America's grand plan? Russia's answer to this will determine its response to any NATO intervention in Ukraine. 
If Ukraine acted alone, Russia might wait for a large-scale force to cross the Dnieper before using tactical nukes. However, if the US is behind these actions, Russia might preemptively launch a nuclear first strike against the US to prevent a potential first strike from the Americans. In the end, it seems NATO's strategy of trusting Ukraine to follow their advice is like trusting a toddler with a stick of dynamite. What could possibly go wrong?